Today at Edutech, we're talking with Nicole Barnes, an ICT learning specialist at Knox Gardens Primary School in Victoria. Nicole has been a passionate teacher integrating ICT into her classroom since her career began 21 years ago. She also holds a Master of Education in Educational Technology. Nicole, how do teachers currently perceive ICT in education? Do you think it's taken hold or are there still some pockets of resistance? I think teachers are beginning to use it more, but the way they use it could be questionable. I think some teachers that are taking it on are really using it for that collaborative, for great critical thinking and problem solving, but we're still having teachers use it for that plug and play, um, you know, that, that covers the curriculum, but there's really no teaching. It's just it's just clicking on answers and, and rolling through games. So they're the teachers that I try and target with coaching to try and get them to find new ways of, of students to use technology for their learning. And do you think they're on board with that? That is just a case of them not knowing and once you they, come in, you know. They, they can be resistant and they can be, but it's more they're nervous yeah. and they're scared and they're also scared because the students do know more than them and you know they've got to be able to step back and let the children just take take their learning to those new places so that's where I come in to help them with that to help them find new ways to, to show them how they can use apps to create learning experiences with you know that support the curriculum can you tell me a bit about the BYO iPad and BYO laptop programs you're involved in and um, whether you think that indicates there's still a problem you know, resourcing IT in schools? So a few years ago, maybe about six years ago, we started with the BYO iPad program at a different school. That worked really well. And there is a, there is a problem because schools just can't, they, they just don't have the money to resource that technology. And you'd have to be changing it every three years because the technology is, is old after three years. And it's just, it's just not possible. So we do have to get parents to buy it. A few years ago when we started the iPad program, a lot of the parents weren't on board and we didn't have a lot of uptake. It took a few years to get that uptake and then they started to see that it really was changing the way the students learn and they started to see the benefits of it. I think, you know, fast forward, you know, to last year when we introduced the the laptop program, we had 100% teach um, parents on board straight away. So within a space of a few years, I think parents could actually see that that school is now about technology and that you just need it. So we had that support. And you're going to disadvantage your own child possibly if you're not investing in it. Yeah, yeah. So we, we got the support. Where, where it's hard is finding the money for the robotic equipment. Finding the money to buy the Spheros. We have to do a lot of fundraising to get the Spheros into the schools, to get the um, the B bots and the Blue bots. Getting all of that technology. That's that's the hard bit. It's actually easy now to get parents on board with buying the laptops. It's just hard to get all of that extra stuff that you need. Yeah. More funding for ICT. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a bit about why your career took this trajectory? What is it, what is it about ICT in classrooms that piqued your interest? I think I can remember when I first started teaching, my assistant principal literally reeled in one computer into my classroom and just that one computer just opened up all these possibilities and it was only you know Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel that's what we had and I think we, we got onto the internet that year so from there it was just exciting and I think from that moment I was just looking for that new way of teaching I didn't want it to be just to write up our stories I didn't want it to be just about graphing on Excel but finding that purposeful creative way so back you know 21 years ago when we first had it I was looking for that purpose and I just kept on going down that path and then of course I decided that I, I wanted to, to find the best practice so then I went to university and I did more research for my master's of ed in educational technology so it just became a passion of mine right yeah and are you unique in your school or you know are there there seem to be a lot of teachers who are as passionate as you are 
I think what's exciting is is now, actually at the start of this year, we grew by 100 students. So we actually got five new teachers into our school and we got five graduates. And I think that's the exciting part because they're really excited and they're passionate. And in some ways, I find myself working with them more now than with the older teachers because that creates a bit of peer pressure because they're doing all these amazing things and they're excited and then they go to their level meetings and then they share what they're doing and it creates that little bit of, oh, I'll have to try that too. Yeah, so it creates that little bit of a, a flow. So getting getting those new staff has been really great. So working with the ones that want to learn, they're the ones that I, I work with and they're the ones that, you know, that sort of get that flow happening across the school. At your school, what are some, what are some exciting um, or really effective ICT practices that you've implemented? We've gone to Office 365 and that was to create a learning platform for our students with, their, with, the, um, with the laptops. And I think within that, I remember when I first was, was, was taken to a, a PD and I really had no clue of how to use it and I didn't know if it was relevant to students. But over the course of last year, we started developing OneNote teams within our class and then within that OneNote, they would have their online learning book, I suppose, for their homework and, and we would push out the work. So, you know, we talk about how we Google something, the children now say, can you push this out to me, Mrs. Barnes? And, you know, so, and, and so they, they, they're creating the collaborative learning spaces now. If they want to share something, they'll open up a tab in the collaboration space. They'll create something that everyone can share from. They create forms, they quiz each other, they put the URL in there and everyone collaborates, they work together. And that's now across grade fours and grade fives and hopefully grade six next year yep. as the, the laptops move up through the school. Okay. So that, that has really transformed the way the kids are learning. So that, is that the, the main way you like to use um, ICTs is for collaboration? For collaboration. Yeah. We also use it a lot for coding as well. So, And that's right from foundation, working with the with the B-bots and using them for measurement, using them for directional coding. Then we start going through to Scratch, Scratch Junior on the iPads, um, all the way into Scratch. And now with the, with the funding that we've received, a lot of walking around the school and free dress days and all of those things yeah. has, has gathered lots of money for us to get um, Spheros into the classroom, Edison robots, and so now um, the Ozobots, and so now it's it's working out how we can use them across all the curriculum areas. And so that's exciting. It is. Yeah. Nicole Barnes, thank you for talking with us. Thank you. Review. Thank you.